Praise the Lord. Praise God. I want to appreciate uh, uh, everyone for being here uh, on the, uh, this uh, Friday evening service. Um, 16th. Uh, I want to uh, appreciate this opportunity. Uh, appreciate my pastor, and all the ministry, and everyone uh, involved. Uh, want to uh, go forth with the word, good word, uh, try my best to be connected with God so I can be ready, instant in season and out of season, amen, uh, I, uh, those of you that, uh, that are that are tuning in and know me, you'll know why I'm wearing these shades, those of you that don't, uh, I've always been told by those, my authorities, to always uh, let people know because uh, some people start misjudging, but uh, you know that I can't see, so this is why I, I wear the, I'm wearing these shades. I'm, I'm blind. I have a reader here for me, a brother um, Alexander Hutt. He's going to be reading for me, and uh, Jesus will be preaching. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, the title of this message, I uh, I thought about it and uh, I prayed about it and I asked the Lord to, you know, give me something edifying. I'm not a, a prophecy preacher or any any of those kind of other ones, I, uh, I'm more of a motivative, you know, motivating preacher. I, I, I like to motivate people, uh, you know, f according to my life and the way that the Lord is, has motivated me. So I like to share what God has done for me and uh, keep that fire going. Uh, today I want to title this message, To Focus on the Light. We need to focus. I, I went through the titles a whole mess of times, and as I went through it, I, I kind of... Uh, this kind of made sense to me. You know, we need to focus. You need to focus on the light. Uh, I'll tell you why. The reason uh, what got me to get this message was I lost my sight. But uh, what I do have, you know, you've got, you've got the, the, your eyesight measured 2020 and so, and so forth. Well, mine, when they ever asked, they asked me what about regarding my sight, any doctors or whatever, any kind of uh, places asked me about that, I, I, my answer is I have what's called light perception. I have light perception left. I can't see anything, but I could see the light. You know, my uh, uh, I could tell when it's when it's daytime. I could tell if I'm in a room and there's a light on, so I could see the light. You know, so God kind of uh, God kind of gave me that. You know, because it does help. Believe me, um, if you can't absolutely see anything, I, I uh, at the Braille Institute I had a professor there that. Uh, everybody had different uh, reasons for being blind, but his uh, his was he had no eyes at all. His uh, he had no eyes, no eyeballs, you know. And I, uh, you know, there's always somebody with a worse situation, you know. And I, I thought about it, but but yet this man was a professor, you know. He had a he had, he had a degree, he uh, he had two houses, he had all kinds of things. He was he was blessed, you know. So there's there's no excuse, there's no excuse, you know. You, Focus on something, you know, and, uh, and, and be motivated. Amen. Uh, Brother Hutt, read me the first uh, verse. First verse is uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Word of the Lord goes as follows. In the beginning, God created the heaven, heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And the darkness was upon the, voice, the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. There was dark, everything was dark and void. There was nothing. There was nothing. It was dark and void. Nothing was happening. And actually in the dark, nothing happens. There's no, there is no prosperity. Amen. Uh, in the dark. But uh, until the Lord came upon the face of the earth and he said, let there be light. Then that point on, things started to be created. Amen. If you would, bow your heads with me together in one mind and one accord. We'll pray right now in Jesus' name. Dear God Almighty, Lord, we love you, thank you, and appreciate you, Father, for this time that we have. I ask that you guide me, hallelujah, and anoint me, Lord God. Not your word, because your word is anointed, Father. But guide these words, my letter, that I speak, Father, that I convey your message to all those that are out there, Lord. And they will receive something more, confidence, Lord, encouragement, motivation, Father, strength, hallelujah, and that they may see the light. 
Amen, uh, as I explain it, Father. I pray this uh, evening, Father, that you will bless this, bless this uh, uh, church, bless all those that are out there, bless our pastor and all the ministry together in one mind and one accord. We'll be careful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The light, <clears throat> until the light comes into focus, uh, things start to happen. Uh, we could say, I could say that we were, we were void and dark at one time, amen? We, were, we weren't prospering. We were going nowhere. There's a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's what the Bible says. And, uh, you know, as, as we went on in, uh, in our life before we came to the Lord, you know, we're, we're, you, know you, might, uh, you might say, well, I have a house. I have this. I have cars. I have, like, pastor says, I got helicopters and all kinds of things, amen? But well, what are you going to do when it, when it comes time for you to meet your maker? No, that's not going to pay your way into heaven. So actually, you had nothing. Because without God, there is nothing. Amen? I, uh, I, uh, uh, I recently uh, buried my father Monday, and I was, uh, I was, I was bringing forth a, a message, and I was telling uh, the people, because we were there in the cemetery, I said, you know, you look at the stones right there, and you could see that there was, uh, there's two dates on those stones. One of them... One of them is a, a, a date you're born, and the other one's the date that uh, that person passed away. Amen. Uh, but between those two, there's a dash. And I was telling them that you, uh, right now, you're in the dash. We're in the dash. Amen. We're already born. We're already alive. We've already been born. And when we were born, we opened our eyes. Amen. And, and we saw our parents. And, and uh, you know, that's where uh, our life started. That's where all everything started. Amen. But on that other date, we're going to close our eyes and open our eyes again, and we're going to see our parent. Amen. And uh, eternity is going to go on to there, but it's going to determine in that dash where you're going to spend it. Amen. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 says that there's a time, a purpose for everything. In chapter, verse 2, it says that there's a time to be born and a time to die. But uh, that, that just came to me, so I, it's not even in my notes. I know uh, that's probably wondering, what am I talking about? <laughs> but I, uh, it just came to me, so I'm, uh, you know, I, I shared that with you, that you know, we're living in the dash. We're living in the dash, and in that dash, we need to be focused. Uh, the next verse right there in Genesis. Genesis 1, verse 4, word of the Lord goes as follows. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Amen. And uh, God had, had saw the light, I, uh, and it was good. Uh, pastor was preaching. Uh, I know I'm going to be taking a lot of stuff from a lot of different people that I've heard, but it's good. It's good to be. This is, what we, this is why you hear preachings, because you use these things to focus. Amen. And uh, Pastor had been uh, speaking uh, messages regarding that, uh, how God made things that are good and, and things that are not good. Amen. But he's seen this particular one. That uh, the light was good. But to make it better, he had to separate it from the darkness. Amen. So we got, you got God's, uh, you got his light that he, he created, but there was a darkness there. So he, he saw that, you know what, it's good, but I'm going to make it better because that's the way God is. Amen. He makes us better. Amen. When we serve the Lord, we, we, we become better. It was good that we came to God. We came to the Lord, amen. We heard his voice, and we came to salvation. But now, as we're here with him, we're not going to just be good. We're going to be better. Amen. And the way to make us better was he separated us from, from darkness. Amen. Amen. Okay, the next verse right there. Word of the Lord is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? Amen. This, and this is what he saw. You know, when he, when he made his, you know, he created, I mean, he knew, he's God. But as he, written it, he, writ, he had wrote these things for our information and our understanding. That he's seen that as he made this light and he separated the light from the darkness, he said, I got to separate this and, and uh, for the future I want my children to understand this, that there's no communion. There's no agreements. There's no, there's no relationship with light and, and darkness. Amen? So what have we to do with 
don't be unevenly yoked, he says. Don't be un, unevenly yoked, amen. Amen, because we don't have nothing to do. Uh, the, the examples that he give, like a yoke right there, what he's talking about, he, say, he uses the word yoke. So that, that's a kind of a harness that's put on an animal as, they're, as they, uh, uh, you know, they're plowing a field. You know, you have to use two oxen. You have to use, you know, two of the same animals. Because you use two different ones, they're going to be like, they're going to be looking at each other. And they're going to be, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, things are going to be happening. But nothing's going to be prospering. You know, and this is why, this is why uh, we are... You know, we need to take that and, and, and recognize it, that we, we can't be unevenly yoked with the things of this world. Uh, you could use that as, as friends, relationships, uh, in many ways, amen, jobs, and anything that you do. Don't be unevenly yoked. You have no business being around worldly people, amen. You want to prosper, you need to be around Christians. You need to be a, around people of your own kind, people that are striving and fighting to get their way into heaven. Amen? Because you got somebody that's coming alongside you and they're, they're, they're living in the world. You have no business with those people. In relationships, you have no people, you have no business. Uh, uh, we just had a marriage uh, conference here and, and one of the things that was said, you want to find a, a, a wife, you want to find a husband, find them right here in church. Find them on the altar right there. Don't go out to the world. Don't be unevenly yoked. With the world, you're going to find trouble. You're going to find trouble. You know, God is, you know, God, God set these standards here for us to follow, and this is what we need. Because there's no communion. There's no agreements. There's no relationship. There's, I mean, you can't, you can't get along. You're, you got to feel, let me tell you, if you're, this is a, this is a hint, and I'll, and I'll be saying this uh, later on in this message, that, that you're, this is going to be like a, 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 a to, to, Confirm that you're in the right place, that you have, you're focused on the light, is that when you feel uncomfortable being around worldly people, worldly things, worldly gatherings, amen? If you feel uncomfortable, then you're, you're focused on the light. You're doing the right thing, amen? You're, if you're looking at uh, something on TV uh, or you're in the Internet or you're doing something... If you feel okay, everything's good, amen, 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 and you know, you, it feels holy, not just okay, but <laughs> it feels spiritual and holy, amen, and edifying, you're good. But if you start feeling uncomfortable, convictions, turn it off, get away from there, amen. Don't be unevenly yoked, don't, you know, that's, that's not the way to be, amen. Conversations, you know, uh, be careful with those things, with, with, what you talk to with people, uh, some people, you know, you could be getting a good conversation with somebody and then it could just go in a different direction. You got to be careful with those things. Amen. You got to focus on the light. Because God saw it was good that he called you to follow him, but now he's going to make you better. Oh, and we're going to, uh, because we have the choice. Because we have the choice. This is, this is the thing I want to talk about right now. Uh, in these next few verses is that we have a choice. Somebody, some people might say, well, I don't have a choice. I don't have, you know, I, I, you know this has happened, that happened, this happened. I mean, let me tell you something. I've been there. I'm, I'm in the dash. I've been in that dash for a while. And I've, I've seen some things, amen, and I've, I've experienced some things. But I, one thing I realize is I have a choice. I have a choice. I didn't have to go along with certain people, and I didn't. And I, and I didn't get involved with certain things, and I'm glad and I thank God for that. But you have a choice. I know, I know some people just, you know, they, they throw it out there where they, no, I had no choice. I did, it was like this. It was hard for me. It was this. It was that. It was this. There's a, you have a choice. You have a choice. That's one thing that God gave to man. He gave them a choice. Uh, the son has been the son ever since you read it right there in, in, in Genesis 1. It, it, God created it. It's been the son. And all the way from then... All the way till now, you don't even know how long that was. The creation could have been like a, a, a day is like to a thousand, thousand years to God. Amen. And uh, it says, uh, you know, when we read Genesis and we say we read it how it says uh, on the first day, the second day, the third day, fourth day, so on and so forth. That you know, and we look at it as day because that's all that's all our minds could could you know understand. Twenty four hours that's a day. 
But that doesn't mean that it only took 24 hours for him to do that. You know, God is, God is an eternal, he's, an, he's, he's eternal. When, uh, between the first day and the second day, it could have been a million, billion, trillion years. Amen? So since then, since God created the, the, all, those, all that you have read there, the sun, the moon, the stars, that's all they've ever been. The way he said it there is the way they are now, and that's the way you know it. You read it in books, you hear about it, you see it in movies, you, you know, every kind of information that you could get up of it, it's never been any different than the way God made it. Animals are the same thing, the same way. I've said this time and time again, they're, bears don't go to universities, deers don't go to college, amen. Dogs don't go to kindergarten, amen. They don't need to because God already gave them an instinct on what they need to do, and that's all they've ever done. I know they do different things because man has made them to cause them to do different things. But the way God, I mean, an animal could be born and live in the wilderness and survive. But, you know, any creature, any animal, anything that God made, uh, 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 any plants that seed it, you, you know, you get a seed, that seed didn't go to school, it didn't go, don't got a degree, you just put it in the ground and it knows what to do. All, all things that God created are like that, except man. Can't put man in the in the woods and expect him to survive. I know that, you know, they make a lot of good movies about it and Jungle Book and all that, but it don't it don't. It's not like that. Uh, uh, a human will die. They they need to be taught. We need to be taught. We need to we need education. We need information. Amen. Because that's the way God made us. That's what the whole book's for. This is what I'm talking about today. We need to focus on the light. We need to focus. We have a choice. And we and and the choices we can have the choice to be good and we have the choice to be bad. That's all. That's how powerful it is. The animals don't. I mean, you you don't go to McDonald's and see a bear in there ordering a Big Mac. Amen. You don't you don't go in the Jack in the Box and see an alligator you know, ordering a shake. You know they can't do that. They don't have that choice. Amen. We do. Amen. Probably talking like that because I'm hungry, but. Amen. <laughs> but we, we have the choice. And uh, this, is why, this is where it comes down to. You need to choose wisely. Amen. Let's go with the next scripture. Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 through 11. Neighborhood said, Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we be brethren. Is it not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from the other. Amen. They had a choice. Lot, uh, Abraham's nephew, he gave them a choice. They came to a point where they had to part because uh, they were, you know, their companies were too big. You know, uh, all of uh, Abraham's, all his family, all his servants, everything, and all that he had, it, 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 you know, things were happening. They were bumping heads. So they needed, they needed a part company. So Abraham, you know, a wise man, you know, he came to a point where they, he, he explained it to Lot. And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, this is what we need to do. And then he said, okay, I'm going to give you the choice. If you go to the left, I'm going to go to the right. If you go north, I'm going to go south. If you go east, I'm going to go west. Amen? So he said, uh, he went ahead and gave it to him. And why would Abraham do that? He was the older one. He could have said, you know, Hey, nephew, you go that way because I'm going this way. And he would have had to do it because he was the older one. Uh, one thing about, uh, you know, these, these kind of uh, uh, upbringing, the old school ways is you got to respect your elders. Amen? And um, he says, uh, but, but he gave him the choice. And why did he give him the choice? Because his love and his focus and his commitment to God. He heard God's voice. He knew who God was. Abraham knew who God was. And he knew that if God, God's the one that called him out, 
and God's going to be with him. So, it, you know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter which way he went. It didn't matter which way Lot took. He said, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go the other way. But in his mind and his heart, he was saying, because God's with me. You know, I'm going to survive. My family, my people are going to survive. He goes, but, so I'll give you the choice. And uh, uh, Abraham, his choice was, was given by his, he, he, uh, the Bible says that we, we, uh, was that we, uh, uh, not in what you see, amen. We don't go by sight, but we, go, we, we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. He was a man of faith. So he trusted in God. Lot, he, he, was, he went, he trusted in his sight. He looked, and he looked both ways, and he seen, he seen one way was dry. It was desert. There was nothing there. He said, nah. He looked the other way. He said, okay, look, there's, a, there's Sodom and Gomorrah. He's seen the cities. He goes, there's a city there. If I need anything, I could just go right there. There's a lot of uh, good vegetation there. There's good water. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. I'll take this road. Amen? A lot of times we, uh, you know, you go by your sight. You know, you, you, you go by, uh, you know, what man promises you or what is offered to you. Uh, but let me tell you something. The guarantees of God, the guarantees of God are, are better than the guarantees of man. If God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, amen, then we need to trust in that. Amen? Uh, you, got, you watch, you watch uh, commercials and they're always offering you this, offering you that. And if you call right now, I'll give you this. And I, I'll, you call in the next 10 minutes, I'll give you that. Bunch of false promises. And then one thing I learned in that dash is that you get what you, what you pay for. And that's just it. That's the bottom line. You know, you, you buy cheap, you get cheap. You buy it good, you're going to pay for it. Amen? And that's just the way it is. And, but this... Uh, this uh, uh, Lot took, chose it by his sight. So that's what he chose. They separated. They parted company, and that's the direction he went. Uh, but Abraham knew. He heard the voice of God. He seen the power of God. He seen the, uh, uh, he seen the, uh, who God was. He, he knew who God was. That's why he commit his, his commitment in his heart and his belief and his faith. That's what he trusted in. And this is the choice. He, that's how he came to make his choice. He was focused on the light. And then there's another one. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Word of the Lord goes as follows. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in, which the land, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, you will serve the Lord. Amen, amen. You got Joshua, another good example. Joshua was there. He was in Egypt. He was a slave with all the rest of them. He got beat. He got whipped. He got mistreated. He got disrespected. You know, he was, he was there. He seen it. He seen it happen. And then he was there when, they, when, when he, the, all the plagues came down, and he started to see and recognize, and, and, and he heard Moses speak, and he, and he seen how what he said was true. And everything that he said, you know, happened. He's seen the power of God. He's seen the strong arm of the Lord. And, and he's seen the, uh, he was there at the shore of the Red Sea. He, he turned around and he's seen the Egyptians coming them. He's seen the wall of fire that protected them. He's seen the ocean, the Red Sea open up. He crossed it, amen. He, he looked on both sides. He's seen how the waters were, were, were heaped up by the hand of God, amen. He's seen that they were walking on dry land. He's seen that they got how they got to the other side. He's seen how the, the, how the sea closed up on, the, on their enemies as they followed them and chased them to kill them. He's seen, how, he's seen them, uh, how their bodies were floating on the, on the water. He's seen how God gave them the victory. He's seen what happened in the wilderness. He's seen all the, the, how the, the earth opened up and, and swallowed up Korah and all the rebellious ones. He's seen all the things that happened. He's seen how God fed them and, and gave them drink, amen, and, and, and clothed them and, and, and took care of them. He's, he experienced it. He was there. He was there. He got to the, to, uh, to the Jordan, amen. He got to there. He, he, he seen how the spies went over and they came back. And he was one of the ones that said, you know, let's go. We could, him and Caleb, let's go. We could do it. You know, because uh, he, was, he had his eyes focused on the light. He wasn't looking at the present, amen. He wasn't looking at what was going on, Amen. 
He doesn't look at the, the, this Jordan's in our way and we got to cross over still and we got to take all these people with us and, and then we got to go fight these, these people, amen, in Canaan land. And we got to, he said, let's do it. Let's just go for it. Caleb, the, the old man, let's go. Let's go, boy. They were ready. They were ready to fight. He seen it. And, 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 and he, he seen how the Jordan was heaped up and they crossed over. And when they went across and how they fought, and how they won. They, won. they got the victory. God gave them the victory. Amen. And they, and they beat the giants in the land. And he beat the, uh, uh, they took the land. Amen. And they, 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 they took their families over there. And he came to the point in his life where he said, you know, because everybody, you know, after, after everyone uh, uh, gets the victory for a while, then, then they get comfortable. At the beginning, they're ready to fight. They're ready to go. You know, they, 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 they go, they, they come out with a big bang. And they go out in a puff of smoke, just like a firecracker. You know, it looks threatening. A piece of dynamite looks threatening, amen. The fuse and the, you know what's packed in there. And it blows up, bam. But then once it blows up, then it's done. It has no more fire. It has no more, no power. Amen. And they, uh, he's seen it. And, they, and he's seen how they were getting discouraged and how they were getting weak. And, and he told them, he came to the point and, and he said, you know what? If you want to go worship the gods, in, in of Egypt, I mean, we came out of Egypt. What's wrong with you? You want to go back to the Egypt? You want to serve those gods? You want to do those kind of things? You know what? Joshua had made up in his mind. And he said, and he, he said, you know what? He was convinced that, you know what? I had enough is enough. Enough is enough. I had enough. I don't want no more of that mess. I don't want to be a slave again. I don't want to be... Serving other gods. He focused his eye. He focused, focused his eye on the light. On God Almighty. He said, as, it, as we followed this light, amen, he fought, they followed fire by, by night and, and, and a, smoke of, a cloud of smoke by day. He, as they followed that light, they got them placed to the, where they were at. With a point where he was talking to them, to the victory. Amen. And he said, you know what, I'm... I'm I'm going to focus on my light, and as, as for me and my house, he said, we're going to serve God. We're going to serve the Lord. This is what we're, I'm going to keep focused on that light. I'm not just going to change. I'm not going to just, uh, we've got a program here called Lifeline Outreach, and uh, uh, I, I uh, work with them, and I, I get to do the interviews, and I tell these individuals when I interview them, I tell them, look, this is not a halfway house. This is not a homeless shelter. It's not a place just to get cleaned up. I know back in the day, I don't know if they do it anymore. I remember the heroin addicts used to go to Chino, and they could. there was a, a place there in Chino Prison where they could go and uh, turn themselves in just to get cleaned up. You know, I looked at it like, wow, what's going on? <laughs> but it's not like that anymore. It's, it's not just to come and clean up. It's to come and not get clean. It's come to stay clean. I go, this is what this, is what this program's focused on is to for a man to come in not just get his sobriety and get his life together but to to keep his sobriety and and keep his life together okay amen let's go exodus chapter 33 verse 16 for wherein shall it be known here that i and thy people have found grace in thy sight is it not in that thou goest with us so shall we be separated I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Amen. We need to separate. He saw that the light was good, but he separated from the dark. We need to, the darkness is this world. This world's in darkness still. They're void and without form. Amen. The light is where prosperity is at. That's where God is. And right there he says that God goes with you. God is with you. He will be with you. But He's going to only, he could, he could only be with you when you separate yourself from this world. You need to separate yourself from others. You need to. You know, and I don't mean, you know, just don't, don't talk to people. We got to because we got to witness to them. We got to shine that light. But don't go along with them. Don't hang around with them. Don't be involved with them. Be separate. Have a balance. Have a... Have a balance in your life. Okay, let's go. What, what do I need to do? Okay, what do I need to do? What, what is it that I need to do to focus? What is it that I need to do to keep, 
to get my separation and keep my separation. Amen. We're going we're gonna to look into that right now. What must I do? So what do I have to do to, to, uh, to gain this focus and keep it? Okay, let's go to this next verse. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth not. Amen. Who does that describe? Jesus Christ. The beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God. Amen. The world was made by him. Amen. He is that light. He is that light. How do I, how do I focus? See, it's no longer like, like Abraham and, and Joshua, the way that they saw God. You know, God came down by this time in our life, in our time right now, that he came down and showed us who he was and gave us a name to go by, something to focus on. So We don't get fooled by, by other things. We focus. He gave us focus, and that's him as Jesus Christ, as he robed himself in flesh. Amen. They couldn't, and, and, and some of you that might be scratching your head, right there it just says that the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness don't understand these things. They don't understand who God is. I tried to change my life many different ways, and it didn't work. But until I found out who Jesus was, then my life changed. Then my life changed. Now I got a name to call upon. Now I got a name to call upon. When I say that name, the Bible says even that name, that the devils tremble at that name. I, that, that, I could call upon that name, and, and the devils will tremble at that name. I got something, to, I got something with me. I got a focus. I got a focus. Okay, let's watch. Let's get another verse and give you some focus here. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. When we follow Jesus, we won't, we won't fall into darkness. Amen. We'll have the light of life, it says. The light of life. Because God is life. He's eternal life. Darkness is death. So it's like a symbol of death. But the light is a symbol of prosperity, of life. Amen. Uh, we're in springtime right now. Amen. Things are growing. Amen. The, those seeds are breaking open and, and they're, they're reaching for the sun. Ain't that, ain't that that's something else? How, the, how a seed, you could put it, you could say to yourself, well, this is the top. No, I think this is the top. No, this is the bottom. You could try and figure it out and you could plant it standing up, upside down, on one side or another side. No matter which way you put it, it's going to break open and it's going to know which way to go. It won't go down, but it's going to reach for the light. Amen? It's just like us. That's why the Bible says, amen, if you have faith as a, as a grain of a mustard seed, as a seed, amen, if you have that, a faith like that, you have nothing but life and prosperity. And Jesus is that life. He is that focus that we need. I got, you got focus, amen. All, all, everything that you do, do it in the name of Jesus, amen. Do all things as unto the Lord, can you say amen, hallelujah. This is the way we need to live our life. This is the way we need to focus on our life, amen. Because he is the light and the light of life. Can you say amen? Okay, let's go. Psalms 37, 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust in him. And he shall bring it to pass. You need to commit. The, the, the verse before this talks about the desire. God will grant you all the desires of your heart. You know, that, we like that part. But the second verse, this one right here, in particular, it says, in order for you to get the desires of your heart, you need to commit. You need to commit your life. You need to commit your life. You need to, you need to have focus with God. You, some people, are, they get baptized and, they, and, they, and uh, they repent and they get baptized and get filled with the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, they, they, you see them out back in the world. Because uh, they, the, the, they did the preliminaries. They did what they were supposed to do. They followed the instructions, but they forgot to make the commitment. You need a commitment. And the way you're going to get that commitment is you need to focus on Jesus. You need to focus on Jesus. Some people use the cop-out, well, I can't read. Well, 
Sister, let me tell you, I can't see. But you know what? I still read. I got my, I got my phone. I got, I got, I got the, a Bible app. I got my computer. I got programs that help me. They, they read to me. There's a way. That's why, and why, how did I find that way? Because I'm committed. I, I look for a way. I don't, I don't cop out and say, well, I can't, I can't, I can't. You got to find a way. There's a way. Jesus is the way, he says in, in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes from the Father but by me, he says. There is a way. But you need to, how do, he says right there, no man comes unto the Father but by me. The Father represents, when you think of the Father, where would you think Father is? In heaven. Amen? So that represents by right there, the word saying Father, that word, uh, that name, that title represents heaven. So you could put heaven there and say, no man comes unto heaven, but by me, Jesus says. You want to get to heaven? You need to focus on Jesus. Okay. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. It says right there, no man comes... Uh, uh, is, is fit for the kingdom of God. If you, you need to focus on the plow. You need to focus on what you're doing. Uh, it gives the example of what, what, a, what a farmer would do as he's plowing a field. And he has, a, he has his animal right there, and he's, and he's following behind it with a plow. And, and, he's, and in order for that, the animal don't know where to go. They don't have GPS. They don't, they don't know where to go. They can't reach in their pocket and say, turn left, go south. It doesn't work like that. It, it, it's, it's, it's the focus on that, on that farmer following that animal with the reins that he got in his hand. He's guiding that animal which way to go and how to plow that field properly so they could, they, there can be prosperity. So they could plant the field and everything will work out. And right there it says if, you, if, you, if, you don't, if you're looking to the left or to the right, you're going to make a mess. How many of us had made a mess in our lives because we look to the left or to the right? How many of us do that? I, I know I've done it. I, I, could, I, could, I could stand alone if you want. I know that I've been told many a times, don't do this, Richard. Richard, don't do that. Richard, don't do that. You understand? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I looked to my left and I looked to, and I made a mess. There I am making the collect call. You have a collect call from, it's me, Mom. Babe, it's me. Amen. There you are, making the, making the collect calls, making the mess. But let me tell you something. You got to keep, keep your eyes upon the plow so you can be fit for the kick. So you got to focus. No man comes unto, the, comes unto heaven but by me, Jesus Christ said. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus so you can gain that prosperity and do things right. Okay, go ahead. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Amen. The gate, we got to go into the straight gate. You don't want to go down Broadway. Broadway, there's, a, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's no uh, uh, rules or regulations. You could just do what you want. But we need, to, we need to be straight in our walk, straight in our talk, straight in our life. Okay, let's go. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. A, ma a wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. You got those things hanging on the side of your head right there, and it says a wise man will hear. We need to use those things. Some, got, some people got some big ones, and they don't listen. But, but a wise man will hear and then use it. Amen. This is the preaching and all the preachings. And, and the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's by reading the word. Man shall live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. These things, these, these words are, are there for you to follow, to hear, to listen, and to gain wisdom, to gain focus. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Amen. Don't ask a sinner what to do. 
Don't ask somebody that's not godly. Ask your pastor. Ask the ministry. That's what we're there for. I, I work in the office and I get the calls all the time and, they'll, and, and they'll, they want to get a hold of the pastor. Maybe he's not there or maybe he's counseling. And they'll say, I'll tell him, would you like to leave a message or just call back later? Oh, no, I don't want to bother him. No, it's not like that at all. And even pastor says it. That's what we're here for. That's what our, we're committed to. That's what our life is for. You know, some people do that. They, 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 they don't want to bother pastor or they don't want to bother any, any minister. And so they turn and they'll go and ask somebody from the world. Because they're always available. They're just sitting on the corners drinking and smoking. And they're out in the streets all strung out. So they got time. They ain't doing nothing. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Be not deceived because evil communications corrupt good manners. This is the darkness. Don't be deceived. Turn away from the. Separate yourself from the darkness. I'm, uh, I'm going to go a little, uh, a little faster now because of the time right here so but but uh, hopefully you get these scriptures amen focus evil communications corrupt good manners go ahead leviticus chapter 20 verse 7 sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for i am the lord your god amen we need to focus and keep our eyes on the light and in order to keep your eyes on the light and to be focused you need to sanctify yourself what does that mean that means to pray fast and read your word pray fast and read your word Amen. Go ahead. Write it down. Yeah? Okay. All right. You got it? All right. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Amen. If you're going to suffer... Suffer for the right reasons. If you're going to struggle in life, don't, don't do it because you're a murderer or a busybody getting in people's business, doing things, amen, for other people and not for God. If you're going to suffer, if you're going to struggle, do it as, as a Christian. Do it as unto the Lord. Focus. Do things right in the sight of God. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without no man shall see the Lord Man, follow peace with all men in holiness. Or you ain't, you ain't. He says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes unto um, heaven but by me, Jesus says. Amen. Okay, go ahead. Revelation 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now, John is, he's looking at, in Revelations, he's an eye in a Patmos and and the, and the angel's taking him everywhere and showing him things to come. He's giving him revelation. Now he gets to the point where he's showing him, he's showing him heaven. And it has a, a bunch of description about heaven, the streets of gold and everything. But you know what? This is one thing that really caught my attention, this next verse. Revelation 21, verse 23. And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, when I read that, I said, oh, my God. This is what we're striving for, man. God, when he made this earth, this dark and, and gloomy world, when he made it, when, when it was gloomy, or without form, it didn't have anything, he created a light for it. And, and that light was only going to be temporary. Because eventually he was going to be that light for you and I. That's why we need to focus on him. Because when we get into heaven, there's not going to be no need for sun or moon stars. Because he is going to be the light. He is the light. That's why we need to focus now. Because we're going to see the true light in his true form. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, last verse. Revelations chapter 3, verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I'm sat down with my father in his throne. Amen. Like Joshua, like Abraham, all these men of faith, enough is enough. Like that verse said, if you're going to suffer, suffer for the right thing. Go through things for, for purpose. 
Like Ecclesiastes says, all things are for a purpose. Go through things with a purpose. To see the light, to follow God, so that we could be with him forever and to overcome and sit with him for all eternity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you will, bow your heads one more time, amen, as we close. Jesus, dear God Almighty, Lord, we love you. Thank you and appreciate you, Father, for this time that we had, God. Thank you for these words, God. I pray, Father, for those, my Lord, that were listening, my Lord, that they will receive, God, that they did receive some kind of uh, 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 education, some understanding, some focus, healing, revelation, truth. My God, almighty Lord, if they were stuck somewhere, in, uh, 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 if they were uh, uh, bounded down and by any, 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 any works of the enemy, that you will release them from that right now, God, and they will gain focus again in their life, Father, and reach you, Father, and go forward, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. We love you and appreciate you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you.